How's everyone going? Welcome back to another Cobra Shadow 8 Model Railway unboxing video. Uh, so, probably will be the last one for the year of, in terms of this uh, main channel. Um, there will be an announcement at the end, which... Uh, so yeah, uh, we already know, you, you guys probably already know what's, it, uh, what's for this video because it's, uh, it's in the title, obviously. So, but first I have to get out the packing box. Gotta love when you get, uh, get new things in the post. So yeah, um, as I say, you uh, pretty much everyone should know what it is. Um, arrived this morning. Uh, it's uh, it looks like it's the original box from uh, because I did buy it from a retailer as well, um, and that sound is kind of scaring me a bit. But oh well, we'll see what, how, how it looks. Um, so let's get into it. But yeah, hope everyone has been well. Uh, as I say, it should be the last um, unboxing video for the year. Should be a th it should be unboxing uh, video number three. Discard that. Um, uh, this is just random paper that I've got stuck to make sure it covers all the um, details and stuff. Uh, uh, this is a scrap bit of paper which is actually from a um, presentation I had to do with my script. But there we go. Whoa, okay. Maybe not. Right. Get those out. Well, yes, so here we go. We've got. Oh, God, just come on. Uh, need to quickly just uh, take the box away because. Uh, no, this might actually be. Yeah, this uh, this might actually be the a new uh, uh, box for um, the Metro Hobbies, which is pretty interesting, actually. It's different. Nice having a sliding box. I kind of like the other boxes, though. It felt a lot more sturdy, but. Um, yeah, we'll see if how this model turned out though, won't we? Um, in any case, uh, yes, it's the IDR model is germ, uh, obviously, it's, um, I did jump aboard on one of them because there was at least one or two of them which are within ERA, um, this is, uh, and we had, so, yeah, let's get it out of the bag, love having the original bag, I always put the boxes back in, very nice artwork right there, um, so, HSGO RTR model, ready to run. This is either the round motor or the trailer box because they brought out one single trailer which is 26MT. Um, let's just quickly have a quick look around the box. I'm um, not very recommended for children. Ideal model is you got your e the email, which is a Gmail email, which is kind of interesting. The pop ABN number, you got just that on the side. Nothing on the bottom. Made in China. And here we go. So. Yeah, this has all been packed already. Uh, so it's pack number 15, uh, RM58, in preserved deliver in the preserve as preserved condition, which is because it was it, so there are photos of it in 1991 uh, in the preserved condition, which is brilliant for my era. Or else I could have got number 56, which was also preserved at the operational in I think it was 92, uh, which is now at Sima Victoria uh, at Ballarat. Um, so yeah, let's get her out. Let's not take too long with uh, with unboxing a uh, to opening a box at once. That's a nice bit of foam there. All right, we got our instruction. Uh, supposedly our instruction manuals. Again, we'll have close up shots, so I won't put this to the camera. Um, yeah, so you get the instruction manuals on your first page with your stay, keep alive, stay alive, whatever you want to call it, uh, which is pretty nice. Um, uh, you must not use pulse type controllers. Um, that's basically con uh, train set controllers. So like the Hornby controller, the pulse controllers. It's also interesting. Um, yeah, no, that's very, hmm. Yeah, it's uh, basically meaning they don't use train set controllers, which is kind of an interesting problem. Uh, a lot of uh, it's uh, pulse controllers are specified by PWMs, uh, so. Uh, Hornby controllers have and even Cardo controllers have which is kind of interesting, as nice as they are. So, I don't know. Um, yeah, they've got a sound quick version, this is, that's useless. It's, this is actually just, they've given us a sound um, uh, thing as well. Yeah, you've got window blinds, nice, spare parts. Um, and there you go. So it's pretty, pretty regular instructions, and you've also got a breakdown sheet of 
the derm unit itself. It should just be the derm for this one, not the, not the trailer, which is <laughs> don't need a, a trailer. Um, yeah, or exploded diagram, which is really really nice. Anyway, let's get into it. So, in the plastic um, thing, as per usual, basically every company does the same now. Surrounding foam. Let's get her out. Try to get her out. This, is, uh, this foam is actually a bit more firm than some of the other companies. <laughs> yeah, it's like the sort of stuff that it's more industrial standard sort of stuff. But there you go. Let's put that over there. You probably noticed a few. Uh, the, uh, this. Uh, I've only just started doing stuff with model railways again, and the back is just full of dead locomotives and broken wagons and stuff. So, um, okay, let's push that out. And what's this? These are. I assume are these the blinds that they were talking about? Possibly. I have not. Nah, I have no intention to put them on. Anyways, that's actually pretty heavy as well. It's metal. And take her out of the ice block. So there we go. She's got, uh, yes, it's the model with the blue roof. It actually doesn't fit 100% modern standard uh, modern anymore because the modern ones actually have a uh, cover on some of the um, horns, but it definitely fits my era. And there we go. That's really really nice. Um, so has a uh, because um, I can't usually say this when it's uh, on the table. It does have a decent amount of heft to it. I can definitely feel the uh, the bogey which is powered, which is just on one end. You can uh, which I can because uh, you can see through the windows, which you'll have a closer look later. But yeah, wow, that's a really nice model. And to think I was looking at possibly one day doing one of the kit models. But there we go. So we'll put her down. We'll get her uh, get her all set up, everything cleaned up, and um, take a nice close look at her. All right, here we go. On the desk, all set up, ready to go. Uh, once again, let's have our first impressions. Let's have a quick spin of the model, eh? Hopefully that's enough to take in some of uh, some of the niceness. Of course, we'll have more close-ups during the history section of this um of this video plus, and we'll also have some real running shots of the real one this time because seeing that I actually have shots of the real uh, RM58. In any case, looks really really nice. Um, has like full interior and stuff like that. Here. Uh, even things in the cabs, uh, nicely fitted ex extra fitted parts. Uh, nice bit of heft. I'm not sure about the angle of that uh, step on the front, but maybe that's correct. I'll have a look. Um, horns look nice. Everything looks there, which is also good. Um, nice KD couplers fitted onto each end, so you can couple it up to stuff. Um, which I guess in the day they did run as sort of mixed units, but. Obviously in Heritage they really didn't do that much of that and they did run with some uh, guards vans every so often. Not that I have any in my fleet anyways. But yeah, so first impressions look good. I can't wait. Um, there's a lot of things that point out. It feels very sturdy in the hands. Like It um, doesn't feel uh, like when you hold it, it's... Uh, how can I put it? It doesn't feel flexible, sort of thing. It feels like it's a nice stiff model. It's there's no gaps between the body for a body and the shell, which is nice. Um, again, the heft to it was uh, pretty pretty decent. It's enough for itself, anyways, and probably like a few wagons and stuff. But don't expect it to carry a, a pull a lot. Not something that it would do in real life, anyway. So um, yeah. Car catches look uh, pretty decent. Um, detail on the bu buffer beams look a bit bare though, but um, maybe it was correct. I'll go. Uh, of course, we'll. I'll confirm all this before we have a full. This is of course just first um, first uh, impressions. Um, from what I, I know, this is supposedly in, uh, internal lighting. I don't know if that's just a DCC thing or is it also in the DC models, but that should be also be there. Uh, printing looks very clean, very fine. I don't see any printing defects on the model, um, which is also really nice. So yeah, very excited to go and put this on the layout. But first things first, let's go and have a, have a chat about its history. 
and then we'll have a night uh, we'll put the camera nice and close and actually have a look at some of its finer details. The diesel electric rail motor first entered service with the Victorian Railways as the petrol electric rail motor in 1928. There were 10 built at the Newport workshops following a slightly modified design from, Elect from the Electromotive Corporation. They were initially fitted with a single 220 horsepower petrol engine, however, by the 1950s they were beginning to get worn out, which saw them replaced with twin GM diesel engines to extend the lives of the already rather dated units. The derms were used all over the Victorian regional network, primarily serving branch lines. These were designed to operate with a trailer carriage or good wa goods wagons to reduce the need for extra services or locomotives on the line. In 1978, 61 RM and class leader 55 RM were modified with a new seating layout, relocation of the engines and extensions to the frame. This would also lead to the removal of the end doors from the rear driver's cab. With these modifications, they were named the Superderms. Retirement of the derms began in, 19, in the late 1980s, with the final one being removed from service in 1981. All but one derm ended up in preservation. 58 RM entered service in 1930, and upon retirement was added to the heritage fleet and alloc allocated to the Seymour Railway Heritage Centre. More recently, 58 RM has been allocated to Dermpav and operates mainline tours and charters around Victoria's rail network. Alright, here we go. Time for some close ups or close features, whatever. Um, before I fully start padding around, which I should have honestly just left it uh, before I fully zoomed it in, so I'm just going to pull the zoom out and have more of it. There are dogs barking in the background. I don't know if it's picking up. I'm just going to try to talk over them because I can. Uh, quick read of the features that I uh, that I specify for it. It has um, black and metal disc wheels, heavy metal chassis. Um, that's not for this one. All wheel drive and pickup. That's an interesting thing. It's I'm um, pretty sure it's not all-wheel drive, knowing seeing that the wheels are spinning on the other end. But okay, all-wheel drive means every wheel on the unit has to be power powered. But all-wheel pickup is correct. Um, ABS uh, uh, ABS plastic um, brass flywheel, separately fitted uh, metal detail parts operates on all basically all types of rail. Um, Codes, uh, genuine KD couplers, and the built in stay alive. So, yes. Doesn't talk to anything about the lighting and any of that sort of stuff, which uh, I'm pretty sure would be nice if they did, but what can we uh, say? Um, and also talking about the fact that the interior is there. In any case, um, let's once again put the camera in and let's have a talk about the things on the model um, of course remember this is not the um, full review I haven't been able to uh, I'm not fully confirming or denying what is and isn't on the model at the moment that is left for the full review whenever I can get to doing it whenever that is uh, and if I ever do get to it anyways so let's have a look down the side you can see there's our power bike just there once again notice that yes there is interior I'm going to just move the light lower down then you might be able to see some of the insides with as we pan through very nice numbers and uh, uh, painted numbers and um, like the number uh, and what's it called painted lines it's all very crisp and clear and there's our second end of the model You've also got all your exhaust um, fans and stuff on the roof. I think they're exhaust fans. I'm not 100% sure what they're uh, they actually called. Um, spinning, is it spin the model towards us? Yeah, there we go. Looking in towards the cab. The, cab, the windows are a little dirty. Don't know why that is. It might, it might just need a little bit of a clean. Um, you got your um, little RVB horns on the on the roof right there. Three chime RVBs. Uh, nice number. You got your headlight. Nice and small. It looks, uh, I'm pretty sure it's an LED as well. Don't know if those marker lights work, but you definitely got mark. Uh, you got what looks like marker lights. You got some some cab detail, which is really nice as well. Um, 
And there we go, off to the bar, uh, the front buff, uh, cow catcher. It's plastic, as we can tell, and there's a few scratches on one side, but nothing too bad. We've got your um, depositing chute for basically, this, uh, I think it's from the sink and stuff, which drops out onto the, onto the side of the tracks. Uh, from the toilets, um, got a very nice VR on the top there. Let's continue to look into the cab. Let's see if we can see any more inside it. Not really because it's now flaring with the window, but you have got some cab detail, which is really nice. Let's continue the pan through. Let's pull the zoom out a bit though. Got very nice, some very nice little looking bogies there. You can see some of the undercarriage stuff now. Once again, you got all your seats on the inside. Very, very nice. Uh, all the rivets are nicely fitted out as well. And you got your doors. Uh, and now we're back on the motor side of the, well, the engine side of the unit. So yeah, there we go. A nice close-up view of the model itself. Just going to have a quick look onto the roof. All very nice handrails also fitted, all properly separately fitted and sort of stuff like that. And proper, like, uh, what's it called? Wipers fitted onto the sides. But yeah, I think that's probably finished up with our close-up view. Um, definitely. Uh, you've had a nice close up of it anyways and probably multiple of them by now um, I do apologize this video is also coming out a bit later than it, uh, than most others I haven't been able to schedule it in and I haven't really had the time to fully edit it so but yeah really nice look I can't wait to get this on the tracks um, and, get, and let's get a quick profile of it um, from the front uh, from the side yeah, we'll probably go by now as we know gone through the history. So yes, these were built as um, petrol locomotives. Now they're diesel operated. So and of course you got your steps and stuff coming off the side, which is really nice. Um, something which. Thank goodness they did with our like, our ones. So something like the DRCs, um, they didn't actually have steps uh, for the drop crew to get down, which is kind of unsafe. But there we go. That's a nice close up. This is also the darker um, yellow compared to the original yellow on the uh, Durham's, if I recall, because in Heritage they has got a slightly darker, more gold color instead of yellow. Um, but yeah. Anyways, let's hop over to the layout and give her, and give her a run. Obviously, for the, for the sake of things, the running in will be its run because there's really no point. It's just a single unit. So let's go and get her running in and let's get some running shots of her. All right, welcome back to the layout. Um, so it's just off to the side again. We've got our derm. Uh, we'll put it again. Once again, we're always going to use the outside loop and I need to know which way this control is going to go. Um, as I say, this is just going to be kind of his running in, but also going to be its shots because, um, well, why not? There we go, on the track. Um, pretty simple to, well, as I say, pretty short, sure, yeah, those front wheels are, the ones on the front, this bogey are actually moving. So, of course, the neighbor's dogs are being annoying as usual. Got of that, but oh well, um... Let's uh, give her some power and see how she goes. Looks like she does have working lights as well. She's a little bit noisier than most other ones. People said it's apparently quite quiet. This is using a Gauge Master Combi, which does not have a PWM from what at least from what I've been told. You got your headlight. Looks, do you have marker lights? Doesn't look like you've got mark lights. You've also, you can see it. There are interior lights though. But you do got ta some tail lights when he goes to go away. I'm not sure if you can fully see it from that angle. Let's um, let's get the camera off the um, uh, gorilla pod. <laughs> let's just try to get these lights. 
So yeah, you got your two red lights going away. Then you got your just a single headlight going towards you, but you have got your interior lighting which is turning on. So yeah, there we are. <laughs> uh, I think let's get a go in 30 minutes in each direction. So we'll get. Oops, I didn't even stop it. Wow, it got really good slow speed control. I didn't even re realize. <laughs> Um, we'll get it going anti-clockwise first, so short, uh, so, um, short end as they call it, um, and then the uh, long on the other. Well, actually, no, this is the long end because the motor's on the other end, but whatever. Right, there we are. So, finishes running in, finishes running shots. I've even, just for the fun of it, coupled up an e-carriage to it. Even though technically I don't think they would have ran with e-carriages, it would have been more like the big U-carriages or the um, W carriages because they were lighter and shorter. And actually, I was supposed to have two on the back. And just, it honestly struggled with it, which I, I don't blame it, honestly. It's a bit, uh, the, these decision e-cars are pretty heavy. Honestly, probably a little too heavy, but oh well. Yeah, she's definitely quieted down a bit since uh, when starting um, the testing, but seems like a really, really nice model. Very, really, really like the lights in it. Um, she's a, nice, a smooth runner and also has very good slow speed compared to our previous some of our previous Australian models. <clears throat> Steam like mine um, but yeah. Overall, really nice model. Of course, um, conclusions in this video are all, only initial. No, uh, no final conclusions yet. Need to give a fully proper full test run before I can say anything about that. But definitely, in terms of initial, uh, initially, they are a very very nice model uh, for the cost. Pretty comparable with even something like the Sprinters. Um, so, yeah, definitely something that should be in consideration for most um, Victorian railway base layouts. Anyways, we'll get it to depart the station and then we'll end off the video there. Hope you guys have enjoyed joining us for this unboxing video. Hopefully we'll catch you all um, for another video, especially on the layout soon. But honestly, don't know when the next video will be. Probably be the Christmas video actually, um, if you're watching this uh, when it's uploaded. Um, so yeah. And uh, thank you for watching.
we'll catch you all next time.